What's your Sunday best? Hey, what's up? What is up? I don't know. Hitting that tagline was a little bit tough. <laughs> maybe because I'm nervous. I don't know why. <laughs> but maybe it's because some people are nervous when they try to look in their wardrobe and figure out what to wear to church. You know, that's why you just have enough shirts that you just rotate them through your work shirts. <laughs> so it's like, right. done, to the back. Right. Done, to the back. Right. I might wear green. I might wear blue. <laughs> I make it easy. Maybe that's the military me because I was so used to wearing green all the time. Right. So easy. Oh, my gosh. How easy was it to go to work when you wear the same thing every day? See, that's what private schools <laughs> say. They sell you, like, it costs $97,000 a year to go here, but you're going to save money on your kid's wardrobe because they wear one thing. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry, play this back. I'm sorry, public school is free, okay? And the Value Village down the street, shirts are $3. Mm. So I'm, I'm, hold on. Although in our area, even public schools are going to dress code. So anyways. That's true. I think it was beige pants for one of the kids that I, I, I raised. Yes, and so, because and like of like gang shirt. activity yeah, yeah, yeah. and stealing so, <laughs> expensive clothes. That's and where all we this. live. No, she <laughs> so look, so there's enough conversation yeah. about it Ooh. anyway and then you are thinking Ooh, about yeah, going to church yeah. and that's what we're talking about for the next yes. couple of weeks just some of these things that we've kind of picked up on that maybe make people apprehensive maybe you're thinking of going back to church but you're like what do i wear do i do mm. I, am i wearing the right thing maybe you already go and you're asking this question or maybe you're pretty much fine but you've never thought about this question for that new person that mm. you're inviting and so that's why we're covering the topic of your Sunday best. And I think I still struggle so in some of the ways. When you're fully tatted and you have short sleeve shirts and then you're like, wait, should I? Shouldn't I? Should I wear a long sleeve? Should I wear a jacket? I? So I just kind of do everything. <laughs> I don't. I, but but one thing I, I don't do, and, and this I want this out there, is I don't say like, oh, I got tattoos. I'm going to show them to prove a point. That's, that's not it. I'm always conscious of how I present. And that could be even, that could even be bad. Like if you're if you're Depending so if, yeah if you, if it's a negative like <laughs> like you're all right. worked up like oh my gosh am I wearing the right thing am I not wearing the right, right. thing I, I think that's the wrong heart from the beginning. Isn't there a Bible verse that says don't worry about what you're gonna wear? Mm. And we all take it like <laughs> oh don't fret if you don't have no clothes don't fret God will take care of you. But like he literally just said don't worry about what you're gonna wear. Right. And I think about that sometimes when I fret too much about like what message I'm sending or what have you. And, and I think that this, this conversation goes in a lot of different ways, oh, gosh, right? Um, I think there's one avenue of how much money it costs. Mm. There's pitfalls in this logic, okay, that we'll circle back to. <laughs> but like some people are like, well, it has to cost a certain amount of money or look like it costs a certain amount of money, but it can't actually cost that much money. There's other churches like, no, it has to cost that much money because you're doing it for the Lord. There's others that are like, well, no, it has to be mad simple. And if you do anything to stand out, then you're peacocking and we don't need that. That's not right. Um, and then, of course, there's the modesty level, right? right? Modesty comes into effect. That's another conversation. Um, I think those I, are like the I, two big ones, <laughs> right. I would say. But then there's the, also the one of like just our ripped jeans okay. I think that's that and it's a whole other because like for millennials at the very least for millennials ripped jeans are very dressed we feel very good in them and so they're like our suit to a degree and for older generations that's like abhorrent but yet in like 30 years like ripped jeans to a degree will probably not mean in because they don't mean the same right. thing to us but so there's all these levels i mean and then what you it put mean. culture into it too because yeah. i mean the way we're raised i'm in the military and our our colonel has done put out she's like soldiers on civilian dress day will not wear ripped jeans so it's kind of like there's so many opinions when this comes yeah. but I'm, I'm thinking back i'm like you have very rarely wore any ripped jeans to church maybe a few times i think you do have a pair that you wear or maybe i just don't notice oh boy i might be in trouble here <laughs> anyway but then watch this i have that heart that don't care because exactly. i know how my wife's heart is yeah and i think when we boil this all down that's what it boils down to yeah. i'm not gonna say the only one i, I want to go back to modesty because i remember that I have, one's the one yeah because i have a friend who was like okay and they're like they had older ladies that would sit why this had to happen but it happened they'd have older ladies sit up front with blankets 
So when the short manis came in and sat in the front row, they would cover them up so that the, the pastor wouldn't be tempted. Now, look, truth in, on both of that, and it's okay if that's how you run your church. Mm -hmm. I would agree that that's probably the best way to handle that. And then Michelle might not. So I, I mean, I think so on modesty, yeah. I think there's two levels of modesty. I think there's the blatantly obvious. And of course, again, then it's like, well, depending on what su subsection of the culture you're in, that right. changes. Um, but then I think there's the Holy Spirit discernment that comes with the walk. And it's it to a degree, it's conviction. But then to another degree, it's just your tastes change. Right. And I've noticed a pattern and a trend that like over time, women are more in line with the scriptures like in first Peter three. Mm. And I think also in first Timothy, but where don't be all about the baubles and the jewels right. and the braided hair, like focus more on clothing yourself with good works. And it's not that a woman starts dressing on purpose drab boring and unflattering but she does so in a way that where she's not trying to to put herself in positions because of her physicality she's like hey i can dress cute but i'm not i'm not trying to get you with my goodies right right my goodies <laughs> like i i'm worth more than my goodies i'm cute without showing my goodies and it's exhausting to show my goodies really so instead I'm not showing my goodies. And I think that that happens. You walk through that very PC. That was good. That was a high five on the, on the PC walk through. She, you can tell when she's trying to be like, pause, think, talk. Right. But no, it's, it's good. And, and, and I think when we start, we're about digging the Bible. Because yes. we do need there to There are the scriptures. And look, I am, I am not. I am not going to the you must cover your head or any of those scriptures. Because I think what we really need to dig into is the heart. And when we look yes. at the Bible, we see different positions at different times. Yeah. And I'm not saying that because this position was in the Old Testament and this position is in the New Testament that they, they counter each other, mm -hmm. right? I'm just saying that it always drives it back to one point, the heart. When you look at David and he's got the ark, right? And, he, and he's in priestly robes, okay? So he's wearing priestly robes. He's marching in. He's dancing around. And his wife's looking out the window going, what a nut job. Anyways, <laughs> but okay, that's one example. So he's dressed up, right? He's excited. He's praising God. He's like, here I am. And of course, Ark falls and someone dies. And then it all falls apart. But my, my point is he's wearing something there, right? And then when you fast forward and you see Jesus and he's sending out his disciples two by two, well, he tells him, he says, look, don't take gold. Don't take stuff. Don't take your purse. Look, don't take your two tunics. So now they're just wearing their simple wear to go out and glorify God, glorify Jesus, glorify the ministry. So you have two examples where you've got someone dressing up and you've got someone going out two by two and just their, 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 basics. Under, their, their basics, right? But the point behind that is their heart, mm -hmm. right? The heart of the matter. How are they addressing this? Like when you go back to Samuel, when he was first looking for David, right? Mm -hmm. All the hmm sons mm -hmm. were getting rejected. Right. And then God's like, no, you got to understand. Don't judge by his appearance or height for I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. First Samuel 16, right? Mm -hmm. Verse seven. And so when I sit here and I start thinking about this, it's like how for, for myself, right? How am I postured when I go to church? Right. Am I sitting there thinking about, ooh, man, mm, I'm going to look good today wearing this or, or, and, and that's okay too. I'm not saying that that's wrong, but like a prideful man, right? Let's, let's say the prideful man. Right. Or then you've got the person like, I don't care. I'm going to dress however I want to dress because I don't care what they have to say about how I am. Right. Okay. So we got two negative attitudes, but the man who shows up in, in like torn up tattered clothes. Right. Watch the poor woman giving her coins. Right. right? Her right. last money. Let me tell y'all something. She didn't come wearing expensive clothes. Now, the people that were rich giving the money, as Jesus is making this example, right? Right. They're wearing their Sunday's best. Like, within that term, right, my Sunday's best. You got to dress up and put your time, put your suit on. Otherwise, there's no other way. It's like, okay, well, you have an example there where you got them and then you got her. So, heart. Right. And I remember the first time I went to church, I dressed up in very uncomfortable clothes mm. that were considered my i would call it my the old school traditional sunday best 
that I never really wore unless it was like someone's graduation or something. And I get the argument of, well, if you're going to dress up uncomfortably for someone's graduation or their wedding just to be done up and dolled up and, and, and be there, well, isn't the Lord's like mm. congregation and assembly worthy of dressing in the same light? And I understand and I agree with that. But, you know, there's there's people who doll up. There's people who don't. There's people who are in jeans and casual at our church. And there's people who they always have on like the best of the best clothes that they have. But sometimes you don't know, well, what if that's the best that they have? Or what if the person you're judging for their fancy clothes got that all at the thrift store? Right. Right. Like Shay has an amazing (laughs) Valentino blazer that we got for five dollars. Five dollars and it was already perfectly tailored to fit him when we found it. Five dollars. And it's like, so if someone (laughs) is just like if someone who knows fashion comes, "Mm mm-hmm, how much of the tide that he used? Yeah, five dollars of his own money. Five (laughs) dollars, right? So we cannot always be using fashion and elevating it to this status. And maybe that's where this comes down to is if you're the believer welcoming people in don't elevate clothes to such a powerful position. And Mm -hmm. if you're the person coming in, just dress in a way that at the very least conveys your joyfulness and thankfulness for the Lord. Right. And and honestly, I I don't, I don't see the point in a thousand dollar sneakers, but I'm not saying unless you got them for five dollars, (laughs) but, but I'm also, but on that note too, I can see that, you know, some people just, wear things that are more in their money range. Right. So, I mean, like, it's like, okay, okay, cool. You know, I mean, I'm not going to be out there running the Jordans anyways. There's other shoes that honestly are more comfortable on my feet. So this is a cool conversation to have because I think it's all going to tie back to the same thing that we've been talking about heart. Yeah. Right. And it's like Jeremiah 17, 10, it says, I, the Lord search the heart and test the mind to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruits of his deeds. Look, God knows. God knows how you're walking in. And, and do we change over time? I would say yes. You know, I, as we see young men and women come to the Lord, right, and you see them, you know, start to grow in the Lord, maybe the girl who was wearing something a little bit low cut is now not wearing something so low cut. It's, it's amazing how that works or, or how they dress and how God continues to do the work. I started wearing jackets when I preached. <laughs> I mean, that does, but watch, it wasn't because I felt pressure because my pastor didn't pressure me that way. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. And when I go there on Sunday, it's, that's what I'm thinking. Now, a lot of times you'll catch me without the suit and all that stuff because hello, I hold some jobs <laughs> and I'm running around that place crazy. Yeah. Like z- 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 just setting up, getting things done, doing this and that and yeah. the other thing. Even I've molded, right? Not in this like defiant, I just need to show my tattoos. Look, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. So watch this. People are going to know unless I just wear a coat all the time. Mm -hmm. Eight, 900 900 degrees outside. Okay, I'm exaggerating. In the summertime and I'm wearing like a coat. Okay, well, people know I have the tattoos. So what are they looking at? The heart. I was actually judged in that way, not by my leadership actually, but like in some of the churches that I'd, I'd attend, and what's funny is the minute they hear me speak, it's not me, it's God. And, and it's right. like, and so then there, this mentality starts to shift, which is cool when we can shift our mentalities and not base our judgments off of people by how they look, right? but how their heart is. If you're, if you're buying all this stuff because you imagine what people are thinking of you when you wear it, and that's why it's mm-hmm. worth buying, that's then hard issue. That's a hard yeah. issue. If you're wearing, if you're buying stuff you can barely afford, or you already have plenty of stuff but you don't think it's good enough because you think you're going to be judged at church, mm. that's a heart issue in both you, but also the people that, possibly the people that are doing that to you. You need to pray about the whole situation. Mm. You can't. There is accessibility to some other things, and so the question is, why are we insisting on wearing mm. it, right? If it comes down to people, that's the problem. Mm. Right. I like that. Um, Funny story on that. So I was wearing our, the, our worship uh, is my worship T-shirt to church one yeah. Sunday morning. Yeah, there was a reason though. There no, was, of I can't course. remember what it was, but also, I was using it's it. Christian, right? It is Christian, <laughs> but I was wearing it, and I remember someone telling me they were like, "Oh, wearing short sleeves today, right?" Because whatever, or like a T-shirt a or t-shirt. something. Yeah. Wearing a T-shirt, and I and I looked at him, and me being me, <laughs> I said, "Nah, man, like 
we need support for our podcast. And I'm just trying to get people to buy T-shirts. I said, if you would have bought a T-shirt, I wouldn't have to wear it today. Oh, <laughs> and Lord. we laughed, though. Right, we laughed. right. Because it, 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 it was it a good friendship. Because we jab. It, it's a good yeah. friendship. Yeah. But I want to read something as we close this out. Yeah. Because I think that this was I, – I took this out of somewhere. I can't remember exactly where it was, mm-hmm. so it's not mine. Yeah. But I think it really dials in – Jesus' ministry and how people dress, right? It says, while we don't have a lot of information about what Jesus' disciples wore, we can make some educated guesses based on historical records and artwork from the time period. It's likely that they dressed in simple tunics with belts and sandals and may have worn cloaks or mantles when necessary. Peter may have worn tunics by Dorcas, while John may have worn a cow, uh, a, was that a cow, right? Because they always mm-hmm. have them pictured. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but anyways. Yeah. But regardless of what they wore, here's the point. The important thing is that Jesus and his disciples were focused on spreading the message of God's love and forgiveness. Their clothing was secondary to their mission. Yes. Man, I like that statement. I love that. That is where we need to be. Where's our mission? Mm -hmm. Where's our heart? Are we in love and wanting to spread the gospel? Mm -hmm. I love that. You know, me personally, sometimes I wear sweats. Sometimes I wear sweats to church Mm. because, you know, they have fancy ones, though. (laughs) Not really, but here's why. Because I don't want to, like, I woke up late. I'm not trying. I'm cold. I don't want to waste time and be late and let people down by being late. So instead of trying to put together, I just grab something warm and I go. And no one cares. I think I think you got to explain the sweats, though. Because you got, okay. like, these ones you're wearing today, they're sweats, but they got, like, fancy pockets, nice looking. Anyway. They're like sweatpants, They're not pajamas. Pants. They're anyway. not pajamas, right? <laughs> but, I mean, they're, like, right, the right, sweatpant right. fabric, right? And and sometimes I wear a hoodie, and, yeah, it says Bible college on it, but, I mean, I'm mm. a grown woman, and I don't attend Bible college, you know? So he does. But still, I again, it's like, why, like, it right. doesn't need to matter that much. It, it really doesn't. And I think that if you're trying to figure out if you have the clothes to go to church, just go. Because the person you're going for is you and Christ, mm-hmm. right? Like, yeah, everyone else will benefit in your life from you going, but it's you and Christ. And who cares? Honestly, right. who cares what other people say? Save your own life, right? <laughs> By going in there and pursuing the one who actually saves your life right. and let whatever happens, happens. Amen. And, and that's just the priority of it. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all, next week we're talking about church on Sundays. And do you have to go on Sunday? Or is it like a sin to go on another day if you, you know, work on Sundays? So until next time. Bye. Bye.